before I did drag, I used to work in fundraising. As drag became a bigger part of my life, it became harder and harder for me to follow directions because I felt like a queen. Because, come on, look at this hair. That's a leader. That's a crown. <laughs> My name is Miss Cracker. That's M-I-Z Cracker, spelled just like the snack and the racial slur. I'm a New York City drag queen. Right now, I'm just deleting my face. I'm bringing my face to zero, um, so I can make a new face over it. I didn't want to start drag, actually. I wasn't interested, but one of my friends nagged me. They put me in face, and uh, as soon as I looked around in the mirror, I was like, oh my god, she's beautiful. I want to do this more. I don't like my face. There's no pictures of me as a boy. You can't find them anywhere. Okay. The lashes are nail in the coffin that makes you a drag queen. She looks great. I love doing clothes, I love doing makeup, I love performing, and I love stand-up comedy. The transformation is what gives me the confidence to be able to do these things. I do really aggressive, disturbing things. I talk about HIV in my numbers, domestic abuse, addiction, and I think that's my job, to talk about stuff that we don't get to talk about. Oh my goodness, you guys enjoy that number? Yeah! And that number is funny, but it's also important because we need to remember that everybody is beautiful. You've got a big ass. Yeah! I'm here for you. The most important part of drag for me is connecting with the audience. I speak about what's on my mind, and I look people in the eyes. And what drag can offer is us connecting. That's something that cinema can't offer, that television can't offer, that Broadway can't offer. So it is what makes drag different and special. And it has to be real, because people can tell when it's not. <laughs> 